This is Twit. Now, the data center has always been a great place to see the evolution of the state of the art in information systems. We went from racks of 4U servers to 42U of pizza box systems, from high-density racks to hyper-dense virtual machine clusters and containerized apps, from VM clusters in your own racks to virtualized services in the cloud, and now containers themselves in the cloud. Now, this past week, Microsoft released their Azure Container, Container Instances to general availability. It's been in beta for a while. Now, it's all part of their rapid cloud container deployment service. It allows admins to use a serverless approach for Linux and Windows-based containers, all hosted in Azure. Now, here's how it works. In the old model, you have a virtualized server that handles the entire service. It may contain a couple of containers, dynamically adjusting the amount of resources that it needs to deal with the load at any given time. But in the new ACI model, you can divide the service into different stages of work, with each being a cleanly packaged burst compute module that is built per second of use and does not require a virtualized machine. Now, the end result is that your costs go down and your response time goes up because of the granularity of the service. Each component can burst to its requirement. And rather than dealing with a bottleneck within the, the virtual machine itself, uh, the different components can use different amounts of resources and everything is billed per second. Now, this is interesting. It's not getting a lot of play, but I can't stress enough how, how groundbreaking this is. Lou, this is really what we've been looking for, right? I mean, you, you take a process, you divide it into its component pieces, and each one of those pieces uses exactly as much resources as it needs. Uh, this is huge. It's a huge departure from what we've come to expect in the cloud. Absolutely. I mean, you're basically now normal, normal things today are, are dependent on physical resources. And so when you have, you know, VMs, obviously those are intentionally based on physical resources as well. But now when you kind of take that out of the picture and you're saying, I just have this piece of code or this piece of uh, this application that's not physical anymore. It's, it's, it's essentially a logical piece that I can kind of put out somewhere in isolation. I can then now run these things in concurrently across many, many things and be able to scale them out virtually without having to really worry about what the physical resources are there backing it. And I think that's where this becomes like kind of mind blowing. It just kind of explodes with opportunity and possibilities and potential. Um, and so, you know, even software development is trying to switch into that kind of logical blocking and, and breaking down of applications. All right, we've got Specs in the chat room who says he'd like to see the workload management algorithm for that. But that's the point, Specs. Azure handles all of that. You don't have to figure out an algorithm for how much is allocated to each process because it just uses as much as it needs. So, for example, in the traditional model, when you've got a virtualized machine running a series of containers, the, the at issue is that those different containers are going to require different amounts of resources. And you have to expand or contract the virtual machines based on the, the one module that's using X amount versus one-tenth of X. In this, every single step of the process uses exactly as much as it needs. It can expand or contract based on how much load is being put on it, which means you don't pay as much, and it also means your responsiveness is off the charts. I mean, for the developers, I think that's the key. They're going to love this because they understand that the login screen doesn't need as much processing power as the back end. The back end probably needs a little less power than the graphical interface based on how much that's using. And you can even divide the graphical interface into different modules so that you never have to worry about load. Now, they did release a little, bit, a little bit of pricing information. The containers are built according to how much processing time and memory that they, they use on a per second basis. Think about that. This is not per day, per hour, per minute. This is per second. This is real dynamic charging. It's $0.000012 per CPU second and $0.000004 per gigabytes of memory per second. Uh, so we're talking about less than pennies here. Curtis, the optimization gets my side excited, but I think that pricing will get management excited because now you you can just go into a suite and say, look, it's going to work the same way. It's just going to cost you one-fourth of what it used to. They'll get that, yes? Oh, that statement by itself should get, get a lot of people truly excited. And the, the neat thing is that this is in many ways – 
just an evolution. You know, we, we, I remember the days when you had to order a server that came complete with all of the physical attributes you required. And so you had to figure out how much, as you said, of, you know, CPU storage, memory, everything else you needed. And often in order to get all of one thing you needed, you had to over provision something else. Well, as we've gone to the cloud and we've gone to everything as a service, we've seen the, the granularity increase. And I think this is just the next and, and truly logical step in that. It can now get truly granular based on individual workloads of the moment. And as you point out and, and Lou has pointed out, that makes the cost very, very attractive. Right. And it's not just the cost. You could also look at this from a security perspective, because when we were running containers inside of virtual machines, the separation between those containers wasn't always perfect. You could break out of a container and theoretically, and they actually were a couple of proof of concepts, get to another container within that virtual machine. Since these containers are running bare, they're not running inside of a virtual machine, there is no opportunity to break out of a container and get into another part of the process. So you can imagine that this could be used as a security measure. Um, if you isolate the individual components that contain different parts of personally identifying information, it means that if one is compromised, you cannot get into any of the corresponding models, modules, which makes that data much less valuable. 